I personally think that people aren't impressed enough at how conscious we are of things. Consider this, if you're capable of adding two single digit numbers in your head, you're performing an unprecedented feat of computation. For most of existence, as far as we can tell, and not including aliens that might have gotten there first, the idea of adding two numbers was just completely foreign to the mind. Our brains are doing computations all the time, but most of these are completely unconscious and we never actually observe the computational process. To do computations and explicitly know the results is kind of unprecedented, so think about that the next time you're feeling dumb. Now for our minds to reach this level, it required us going beyond the basic architecture which biological evolution has equipped us with. And you can actually observe the attempts by early humans to contemplate ideas which are utterly foreign to the mind, in mythology and early writings. We slowly began to wonder about transcendental ideas, ideas which go far beyond the confines of biological evolution. The Origins and History of Consciousness by Eric Neumann essentially breaks down the symbols which show mankind really trying to grapple with ideas which just seem so enigmatic and paradoxical to a monkey's mind. Interestingly, there's this dynamic relationship between the conscious and unconscious minds which gives rise to naturally occurring symbols whenever we encounter problems. The unconscious seems to be constantly experimenting with new images and then presenting them to the, uncon to the conscious mind and then asking, does this mean anything to you? So the unconscious mind tries to produce symbols and the conscious mind tries to use those symbols as metaphors for concepts which are not easily graspable. The concept of time, for example, is not actually that intuitive. In fact, we use the metaphor of space to understand time because we can spatially lay out time in a successive manner. But we also come into a world that existed before us and it has a history. So at any point in time, the question naturally arises, why am I here at this time and what came before me? But the unconscious mind isn't explicit, it operates using symbols which are not immediately graspable. And these symbols are usually very rich with meaning and so it isn't exactly easy for the conscious mind to make sense of them. And yet the depth of meaning within a symbol usually indicates that very profound ideas are being conveyed by the unconscious mind. Neumann uses the example of creation myths to explain what this means. The symbolic story of the beginning, which speaks to us from the mythology of all ages, is the attempt by man's childlike, pre-scientific consciousness to master problems and enigmas which are mostly beyond the grasp of even our developed modern consciousness. Now one such symbol, which is deceptively simple, is the circle. Early humans definitely observed circles, like when we looked at the sun or looked at the moon or tree stumps, I guess. But when they meditated upon circles, their minds were opened up and they were able to catch a glimpse of things which the species had never contemplated before. In a very weird and literal sense, humankind's awakening can be partially attributed to circles. We see in early writings that mankind seemed to obsessively contemplate the symbol of the circle and naturally associated with certain concepts. A circle seems like a fairly innocuous thing, but really within a circle is something utterly profound and truly transcendent. It was actually quite a leap for the species when we began to think about circles and see within them ideas and concepts which go far beyond the remits of typical contemplation. Therefore, we often see circles as symbolic representations of the beginning, of the perfect, complete state of unified opposites where no opposites have emerged. Neumann writes, Circle, sphere, and round are all aspects of the self-contained, which is without beginning and end. In its pre-worldly perfection, it is prior to any process, eternal, for in its roundness there is no before, no after, no time, and there is no above, no below, no space. All this can only come with the coming of light, of consciousness, which is not yet present. Now all is under sway of the unmanifest Godhead, whose symbol is therefore the circle. So all throughout early mythological writings and philosophical texts, we see circles being referred to as symbols of perfection and origin. Plato wrote, Therefore the Demiurge made the world in the shape of a sphere, giving it that figure which of all is the most perfect and the most equal to itself. The idea of Wuji in Taoism is depicted as a circle, and Wuji originally meant infinity, but it also took on the connotation of being the primordial universe prior to any manifestation. In Kabbalah, Ein Sof can be translated as infinite or without end, and it also refers to the idea of existence prior to any manifestation. As you can see, it's depicted as this circular structure. So according to Neumann, circles represent the dawn state of mankind, the state which we feel before we have an ego. Because before we have an ego, there's no sense of the continuity of time. Every moment feels like a momentary instant which is disconnected to the prior moment. 
Only when there is an ego which is capable of narratizing its actions does the linearity of time become apparent. This dawn state that I'm referring to existed in the historical past, when humans were no different from other primates, but it also exists in the life of every individual when you're a baby and before you have an ego. So when you at last acquire an ego, you can recall a time when you didn't have an ego. And so when you think back to this time, the idea of the circle can help your mind comprehend that, because a circle isn't linear. Any point on the circle acts as both the beginning and end, and it's an enclosed loop, it's endless and eternal. This is also why circles are projected as symbols of primordial perfection in creation mythologies. It refers to a time when we didn't have to deal with the linear progression of time. It also evokes a sense of endlessness and infinity. The Greek god Ion is often depicted with his wheel, and he represented unbounded cyclical time as opposed to linear time. The ego is trying to reflect on something which it knows happened, but it can't quite grasp. And so the circle acts as one symbol which illuminates what that was like. And so it allows the conscious mind to understand that primordial state of existence, prior to any ego. As Norman writes, The symbolic thinking portrayed in these images of the round endeavors to grasp contents, which even our present day consciousness can only understand as paradoxes, precisely because it cannot grasp them. But I want to suggest that this connection to infinity which the circle implies is much deeper than the mere fact of a circle being a loop. The symbol of the circle is so rich that mankind, even today, is still contemplating circles and reaching higher and higher insights from them. A circle is a way stranger object than it may at first appear. Because does a circle have no corners? Yes, right? But consider this. Take a square and add a corner. It becomes a pentagon. Add a corner again and it becomes a hexagon. Add another corner and it becomes a heptagon and so forth. Add a thousand corners and you get this object called a chiliagon. So the more corners we add, the more circular it becomes. So maybe it makes more sense to say that a circle has an infinite number of corners rather than no corners. And this also means that it has an infinite number of sides, but it also somehow has no sides. So somehow both infinity and zero are captured by a circle, which is quite profound if you think about it. But consider this as well. Circles are divine because they are metaphysical. They literally don't exist. You might think, of course circles exist. A mug, for instance, is circular. Except it isn't. It literally can't be. It approximates a circle. But if you zoomed in on it, you would eventually find edges. So circles are metaphysical entities. They don't actually exist. Now you can argue that all shapes are metaphysical entities because there's no such thing as a perfect square, for example. But circles are special because the concept of infinity is deeply implied by circles. We know this because the ratio of a circle's diameter to its circumference is pi. Pi is equal to 3.14, except it isn't. Pi is actually an irrational number. This means that unlike other numbers with decimals, such as 0.6 repeating, you can't write it as a ratio of two integers. And this also means that the number literally never ends. It goes on, 3.14159, and then it just keeps going. At no point does that decimal end. It just goes on and on forever. And you can actually prove that this is the case. This is what I mean by a transcendental concept. It is so far beyond what humans normally contemplate that it opens us to ideas beyond imagining. Infinity is a very obscure concept, and if a species is able to grasp the concept of infinity despite itself being a finite being, shows that it has reached a very high level of consciousness. And we didn't actually know that pi was irrational for most of our history, but we did get hints. Just from the fact that a circle has an infinite number of corners, it would imply that pi would have to go on forever and ever. And clearly the idea of circles motivated a lot of mathematics, and early humans were able to show, rather remarkably, that pi must be between 3 and 4. Early mathematicians were therefore obsessed with circles, and were able to derive logical truths from contemplating circles. For example, the Rin Papyrus, which is a nearly 4,000 year old text from Egypt, discusses a close approximation to pi, 256 over 81. And Euclid built the bedrock of modern mathematics, known as Euclid's Elements, in which he systematically defined a circle, as being all the points which are equal distance from some point. And like I said before, a substantial amount of the mathematics which you learn in school is derived or uses the assumptions of Euclid's Elements. And from there we just kept going, deriving deeper and deeper insights from circles. We fairly recently proved that pi is not just an irrational number, but also a transcendental number. What does that mean? <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain, but just know that it means that pi is a much more profound number than we realized. Curved lines and trying to contemplate curved lines also gave us calculus, which is particularly interesting because calculus is very reminiscent of how the conscious mind approaches the world by breaking down a curved line into linear lines. 
You can think of the left hemisphere as being like a linear line and the right hemisphere as being more like a curved line. And so calculus, which is using many straight lines to approximate curved lines, is quite reminiscent of how the conscious mind attempts to pick apart the far more enigmatic nature of the unconscious mind. It's quite interesting then that something like a circle emerges from the unconscious as a symbol, only to be picked apart by the conscious mind trying to grapple with something so seemingly paradoxical. And again, there's so many insights that have been derived from this idea. Einstein's equation for general relativity looks like this, and as you can see, it uses pi. We also recently discovered truths related to spheres. For example, thinking about the curvature of the Earth teaches us about the nature of curved spacetime and things like singularities. So our minds are becoming more and more conscious because of circles. And this isn't just about contemplating ideas, it's also practical, the most obvious example being that of the wheel. So yeah, our minds are being elevated by this very innocuous symbol, and there are many more symbols which also have an effect upon us, and continue to elevate our consciousness, and develop further the collective knowledge of mankind. So if you found this enlightening, please comment down below, and please consider subbing to me on Patreon, that would be super dope, and you'll be able to speak with me directly. Anyways, thanks for watching, have a good day, and may good luck always come your way.